Hey guys, I'm Aaron. Welcome back to my channel, Help Me DIY. Thanks for watching the next garage build update. Today, I'm going to install a pressure washer. So the shop is still coming along. This is the BMW that you can win. Here's a link to that if you are interested in winning a free car. But over here in the back corner of my garage, or the front corner actually, of the garage, I have a spigot already here. A little French drain inside the door so this is gonna be a little um, car wash kind of bay in here so I already have the vacuum attached to the wall today I'm gonna to use a little pressure washer that I got on Amazon it is the Karcher 1700 PSI and this is the one they call the cube because it yeah, looks like a cube. It doesn't have the little wheels and handle like a typical pressure washer, like one of these guys that you push around. It's just essentially the engine unit. So this is the stainless steel shelf that I also got on Amazon that I'm going to be setting this on. So the first step of the process is to mount the shelf onto the wall. It comes with a little pack of hardware with some drywall fasteners. Uh, I don't think these look that great. I'm going to use some better ones. This is my favorite part of any assembly process is peeling off the protective coating. So satisfying. So under the shelves, there are these little posts sticking up and they say just to use a flat washer. And they have these acorn nuts they provide. So just three here and tighten those up. The acorn nuts are 10 millimeter. So this is our assembled shelf and you're gonna to have to figure out where you want to mount it. But just as a demonstration purposes, if I were to mount one side to a stud, these are 16 inches apart. It's not gonna line up with two studs. So you can pick a stud on one side and then you'll just have drywall anchors in the other. I just held this up to the location I wanted on the wall, used a level, marked all uh, four holes on each side. And I pre-drilled these ones over here on the stud. The one in the middle ended up hitting a nail plate. So I'm just gonna hold it on with two screws into the stud on this side. And I have these cool drywall anchors. They are amazing. Each one holds 75 pounds. So we will be really good with these. All right, if you've never used these before, let me introduce you to them. They have a sharp tip and they self tap. So you just essentially put them on the wall where you marked it. You press it in and you drill. And then you keep going until it's flush with the wall and your anchor is in. Up here, I just used two more of the flat washers that came with the kit and the screws that go into there. These two are going into a stud. Like I said, there's a nail plate behind that one. And we got three more anchors over here. So this thing is super solid. It's not going anywhere. Pressure washer unit just came straight out of the box. Set it on the shelf. So this is how it comes packaged. In this box, we get the uh, gun. We get a little extension wand with a quick disconnect on it. And we get this hose. Stored in the back of this unit, we have a long uh, cord to power it and then some more accessories. You get two nozzles and there are two little places right here to store them. And on the side for the water inlet, there's just a little protective cap here and it comes with this so that you can attach a hose to it. It's got a little screen filter there. All right, I'm gonna try a temporary test. I attached one end of this high pressure hose to the gun, one end to the high pressure outlet. Attached a hose here, plugged it in, turned the water on, and to start this thing, this is a foot pedal because it's normally on the ground. So you press it down to start it. <laughs> And as you can see, it just ran briefly because it uh, is pressurized now. Yeah, it stops pretty instantly when not in use, which is pretty cool. So you're not listening to a gas powered guy running all the time. This is just the uh, soap hose that it comes with. So just, uh, just messing with it. <laughs> So 
you can see as it comes, this hose is really short. Uh, it's not very flexible. It doesn't store very well. There's no place to uh, put the gun. So we're gonna be doing some upgrades to this thing to make it a lot nicer. One thing I never saw anybody talk about in the videos is this thing sitting on the shelf. Everybody's just looks like they're sitting there and not actually attached. And so in my case, when I turn it on, you can see that it is making contact by these little tiny hard plastic feet. And it does vibrate, of course, because there is a little motor running, so it is vibrating. And uh, I did, I just put my hand here to feel it and I could feel it very, very slowly moving. So what I'm going to do is take a little rubber mat that you normally line like a tool drawer with and put it under there. So this thing is very lightweight, by the way, um, but with this on here, I can move it back and forth and it is not moving at all. Uh, so before, without this liner here, if I would push it, it would easily slide over. So I'm just gonna cut this thing to uh, shape right under here and it's not gonna go anywhere. Here is the final piece that I have been waiting for. Well, at least the next piece. Uh, I read reviews about the really expensive hose reels and uh, they have just the reel itself for like 300 plus dollars and then you gotta buy a hose. Someone in one of the reviews of the really expensive ones uh, recommended this, so I looked it up. It's got fantastic reviews. It comes with 100 feet of hose and it was $199 for the whole thing. Typically it's $2.99. I went to Camel 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 and put a price watch on it and I got lucky it dropped a hundred bucks. Looks like it's completely assembled in the box already. All right, here's our connection. Just turn the water on, coming up into here, out there, into our hose, into our gun. So I'm just gonna squeeze the handle and it's gonna have a lot of air in it. So I'll just bleed it here for a minute. So, got a nice little failure from somewhere. It seems like water's leaking from the inside of here. And that pulls all the way out. This part blew out from the inside connection, it looks like. All right, here is my second attempt. Got this new hose reel from Amazon today. And uh, it comes with this little whip, which fits onto here and also already has the connector to go to the pressure washer. So this is already promising. I attached the handle with the three screws and nuts they gave me. And I attached this to the inlet portion. So this will run up to the pressure washer itself. And then I bought this 50 foot pressure washer hose and it comes with these uh, pressure washer attachments already. This is supposedly a quarter inch, I believe. So I bought this little adapter that adapts it from that quarter inch to uh, the fitting for the pressure washer. So uh, just test fitting this. I don't know if I'm gonna have the clearance up against here to uh, attach this. So I might have to try to turn this out some. Let's see if I can thread anymore. All right, good, with a 22 millimeter wrench, I was able to turn it just a tad so it faces out a little, a little awkward looking, but got it started like this. I'm just gonna crank it and wind it up. Here it is all spooled up and connected to my gun. So I'm gonna connect this up here and we'll give it a test. 
So the whip hose is five feet long. It's actually long enough for me to uh, rest it on the ground for this test. So, oh gosh. Here's the live test. Hope it goes better than last time. Turn on the cold water. Let it come through. Okay. Running into here. Just gonna let it run for a minute. Fill everything up. No obvious leaks yet. All right, well, here goes nothing. All right, well, this is the joint that they made when they attached this thing, so it obviously needs to be tightened up. It's leaking a little bit. And got a little bit of leaking from here. So, uh, I'll have to tighten those things up. And uh, let's test the gun now. from here at least so let me tighten those two areas up all right this is under pressure now test two with everything appropriately tightened up we got no leaks there we do have a very tiny leak coming from their brass fitting to the unit itself so i'm gonna try to tighten that down one more time Great news, after test number three, all the fittings are tight. We have zero leaks anywhere. Now I just have to mount this to the wall. I'm not gonna find two studs at this distance, so I think I'm gonna take a board, mount this to a board, mount the board to two studs. All right, so to mount this thing to the wall, I'm just gonna take this uh, bracket here, put it on here, trace the holes so I can see where the bolts need to go. And then I am going to actually countersink the heads into this so that the bolt will fit all the way through because right now it would not. So I'm using a 7 8 inch spade bit to uh, cut a hole in here. Then I'm going to take a drill bit all the way through. I will mount the reel to this and I will mount this to two studs on my wall. Spade bit and drill bits now i can drop this in and it's going to come through all the way enough to thread it with a nut so these simpson strong tie timber screws are amazing if you've never used them before put four of them in here two on each stud that thing isn't going anywhere so here is our final build up to the pressure washer Leak-free 50 feet of flexible hose, and we're ready to pressure wash. So now inside my bay here, I have the French drain around here, and I can now wash a car. I made one last little modification. I drilled a little hole through my shelf here so I could zip tie that hose up out of the way. So now it tucks under there nicely, and uh, with this space, Right in here, I'm actually gonna mount some shelving for my uh, car care products. So uh, here is the final result.